Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. This is uh, a parallel circuit, and I'm calling it parallel circuit two because it's the second one on the parallel circuit. So here we have a parallel circuit. And at first glance, it might not be obvious that it's a parallel circuit. We have this resistor that's at a slant, so what's actually going on there. But notice that across our battery, we have 100 volts. So again, if we say that this point is 0 volts, and this point is 100, and in fact it's a negative 100, but we're not going to talk about that. So we have 0 volts here. We must have 0 volts across this resistor, not 0, I'm sorry, 100 volts here. So we must have 100 volts across this resistor. It's not obvious, but we also have 100 volts across this resistor because we're saying this point here is 0, and this top line, which is a short circuit, is essentially 100 volts. And don't worry about the fact it's negative, that doesn't matter. So we have 100 volts then across this resistor, as well as this one, and this one as well. And sometimes it helps just to redraw it, because our brain sometimes just wants to see it in a way that makes sense for us. So you can just redraw it so it looks like this. Resistor 1, R2, R3, and R4. Now again, all we're doing is taking this resistor and just sort of moving this thing back over here, moving this point over here. So this resistor is going straight up and down, all right? <coughs> and once you've redrawn it, you just solve for total resistance, all right? So I'm going to go back to this drawing. So we'll solve for total resistance first. Total resistance is 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, plus 1 over R3, plus 1 over R4, which equals 1 over 1 over 3.8 kiloohms, plus 1 over 2.4 kiloohms, plus 1 over 12 kiloohms, plus 1 over 4.3 kilohms. Now the simplest way to do this in your calculator is to do the denominator first. So you do the denominator 1 divided by 3.8 exponent 3 plus, because your, your calculator also does bed math, so it'll be doing all the divisions and the adding. Plus 1 divided by 2.4 exponent 3 plus 1 divided by 12 exponent 3 plus 1 divided by 4.3 exponent 3 equals. So then we get this very, very small number, right? And I'm not going to bother writing it down, but what we've done is solve for the denominator. But notice we have 1 over the denominator. So at this point, what you do is you say, all right, find your x to the minus 1, which is right here on this calculator. So it's the second function, and it looks like this, x to the minus 1. And what you're doing is saying, I'm just going to take 1 over what I've solved for, and that will give you the answer. So we go second function wherever x to the minus 1 went, there, equals. And it gives us an answer of 1.004 times 10 to the 3, which is kilohms. So again, all you're doing is this bottom piece in the calculator, adding them all up, and then once you get to this point, once you've solved for this piece, you just 
go to x to the minus 1 in your calculator and it will give you your answer. And again, remembering that when you have resistors in parallel, the answer that you get must always be smaller than the smallest resistor in the parallel circuit. Okay, so the next piece I think what we're going to solve for now is just the individual currents. Oh, better, the individual voltages. So we know we have 100 volts across here. We have to have 100 volts from here to here. We have to have 100 volts from this across this resistor. We have to have 100 volts across here and 100 volts across this resistor because this point is all zero volts if we're saying that it is and up here it must be 100 volts. So then V1 equals V2 equals V3 equals V4 which equals 100 volts. Alright, now let's solve for the individual voltages or not the voltages, I should say the currents. And also I'm not going to bother solving for power. We've solved for power in a lot of different um, videos. I think it's pretty straightforward. Use voltage times current to solve for it. So let's solve for current one. And again what's happening is the current is, and I always draw it going from negative to positive. It's going this way. So this is total current, the current that runs through the battery. Once it gets to this junction, some of the current runs through resistor 1 and some of the current goes this way. All right. At this point, once this current gets up to this junction, some of it's going to run through this resistor and some of it will run through this resistor. And then of course we have some running along here which we're not too concerned about. We're only concerned about the current that runs through the resistors. At this point you can see there's a lot happening. Current comes in, some goes this way, some goes this way, and some goes through this last resistor. So we're going to solve for I1 I2, I3, and I4. So using Ohm's law, current 1 is voltage 1 divided by R1. The voltage across resistor 1 we've already determined is 100 volts. And the resistance is 3.8 kilohms, which equals 100 divided by 3.8, exponent 3, equals 26.3 milliamps. I2, voltage 2 over R2, 100 volts over 2.4 kilohms. Okay, this always comes up in fractions, which I kind of like and kind of don't like. Four point or forty-one point seven milliamps. So forty-one point seven milliamps. I three. So you can see it's pretty straightforward, right? Hundred volts over what have we got here? Twelve kilohms. Okay, <laughs> 8.3 milliamps. Now I'm noticing a big change in the current, so then I stop and ask myself, okay, are you, are you right? Have you made a mistake? Notice the difference in the resistances, though. We have 2.4 kilo ohms here, 3.8. Here we have 12, so much, much larger than these, <coughs> these two resistors. 
So it's reasonable that this current would be much smaller. <coughs> Excuse me. I4, P4 over R4, 100 volts over, what have we got here? 4.3 kilohms equals. Oh yeah, fractions. 23.3 milliamps. Okay, now, and we've already talked about this before in the previous video, but what happens is this total current just keeps splitting as it's walking through this circuit, right? So some of it goes this way, some goes that way, the, the current that goes into here splits into this one and this one. So it just keeps breaking up. But all of these currents have got to add up to the total current. So let's add these up. And I'm not going to add up the, I'm not going to put in the milli, I'm just going to add up the numbers. So 26.3 plus 41.7 plus 8.3 plus 23.3 equals, wow, that's a great number, 99.6 milliamps. All right. Now, we can also do a check. We know the total voltage. So we can find, and we're saying, one. this thing that we've just solved for here is total current. So I total equals 99.6 milliamps. Right? But we can also say, oh, we have another way of finding I total. I total equals E total over R total. And we know what E total is. It's 100 volts. And we solved for R total, we said it was 1.004 kilohms. So 1.004 kilohms, right? So then I total equals 100 divided by 1, oh, let's go 1004, that's easier, equals, wow, that's awesome, 99.6 and it's 10 to the minus 3 milliamps, bingo. All right, so here we are. Nice check. We've solved for individual currents. We've solved for the individual voltages. We've solved for the total resistance and the total current. And as I've already said, I'm not going to walk through power. Um, and if anyone's unhappy about that, just uh, send me a note in the YouTube site and say I want to see the power. But I think I think we're probably good with the power. Anyway, that's it. Take care. Have a good day.